All right, I want to talk about the compressor superheat. On this system right now, I just finished a system repair. Now we're running 30, 36 degrees compressor superheat. That's real time, so it's going to change, okay? One of my evaporators is running 20 degrees superheat, and the other evaporator is running 17 degrees superheat, okay? The compressor superheat and both of the evaporator superheats all work together, okay? Along with proper insulation on your suction line. Now, this is foam tape. This is not proper insulation, but unfortunately, because of the way the manufacturer designed this system, I really can't get anything else but foam tape. It's better than nothing, okay? Because there wasn't anything on there when I got here today. Now, I would imagine that we're running higher than normal compressor super heat. Not horrendous, okay? Typically, 30 degrees is the highest you wanna see, but I'm not gonna freak out if we're at 35, 40, okay? But you gotta look at a few things before you start going crazy. Look at this vibration eliminator. The vibration eliminator is not insulated. So that is basically absorbing heat, bringing my compressor superheat up. Now, how much? That's questionable, okay? But the moment that I start adjusting on my evaporator superheats, we are gonna change the compressor superheat. Okay, now both of my evaporator superheats are running a tail on the high side, especially since my system is at 34 degrees. My system is just about to satisfy right now, okay? Um, I'm probably gonna go ahead and adjust both of those expansion valves just a little bit to try to reduce the superheat, okay? And, but remember, either way, adjusting the superheat, more superheat or less superheat is adversely going to affect your compressor superheat, so keep that in mind. All right, we have one of my expansion valves right here and we're gonna try to bring the superheat down, so we're gonna adjust it. So I adjusted it four quarter turns down. That's one full turn down and we're gonna let the system stabilize out and see how it reacts. All right, so now that I made those adjustments, my compressor superheats at 29 degrees right now, which is really good. Uh, I also brought the box temp up to about 37 because uh, I propped the door open so that way it wouldn't satisfy. Looks like I have one evaporator that's at about 17 degrees right now and I have one evaporator that's at about 14 degrees right now. So we're looking pretty good. I'm gonna let the system run a little bit longer, but I'm already extremely happy with that compressor superheat. All right, I made another adjustment, and I gotta say, I really dig the fact that Fieldpiece lets you do multiple superheats. So compressor superheats, 26. Uh, evaporator one, 16. Evaporator two, 13. Um, we're gonna give it a little bit more time to stabilize. Now it's really cool because with the Fieldpiece Joblink system, I'm able to wirelessly connect to the walk-in cooler evaporator that's below me right now, okay? I have the JL3PC temp clamps on each evaporator, and that's how we're getting this measurement right here, okay, and this measurement. And then up here, I have Fieldpiece's new JL3LC, large pipe clamp. This can go on up to four and an eighth of an inch uh, refrigeration line. Super awesome, super cool, instant reaction. You can see right now, uh, here we go right here, we're at 28 degrees. So I open it up and we're gonna lose, but the moment that it makes contact with the rapid rail technology, we're gonna immediately see temperature, okay? All right, I just connected it back. Uh, looks like we're at 29 degrees super heat, so it's instant re uh, readings, it's awesome, okay? Uh, so this system, I'm gonna go ahead and give it the all clear. Uh, even though my evap super heat's just a tad high, I'm not gonna go cranking on it too much. Um, I've already made some adjustments and I dropped it significantly, so I want to let the system stabilize out.